Hello and welcome to my first ever PS4 review. Today I'm going to be taking a look at FIFA 14, which has probably been the biggest shock and surprise of the entire PlayStation 4 for me and my brother. He bought it to basically play it with the people from work he works with who, well obviously, uh, who have tournaments and that and they go around each other's houses and they play and that. And he brought it over simply because... As much as I hate the majority of football games and I hate the sport itself, it's not what I'm into, I just can't enjoy it. I am a hockey fan, it's the only team sport I actually like. Um, so it's one that he brought around just to try it with us because I do like the odd football game but I mean it really is rare. It's like Swaz and dating back 20 years for that. It, it, one of the FIFA games, one of the Pro Evo games. But because my copy of Injustice, which as I review this now, has been dispatched for over a week now and still has not arrived. Um, as that hadn't came, we needed something to be able to verse each other on because at the end of the day that's what the plan was. So he took a week off work to play on the PS4. He's obviously going to blast through Call of Duty and Killzone and that in his own time, but then he wants stuff that we can play together and involve a little brother in who plays football games and that. So he brought it round and it's just been one hell of a shock because this, as far as I'm concerned, is the best football game I've played in about 20 years now. It is phenomenal. Now I'll be honest, it's rare I review sports games and there's probably going to be a lot of people out there who want me to go into every minute detail because that is something that I'm kind of known for to go into the thing that other people don't talk about. But I haven't got a clue and wouldn't even know where to begin because I do not play sports games as simulators and this is why I dislike the majority of sports games these days. I play them because I want to play a simplistic version, an arcadey version almost, of a game that is fun to play and that is how I will be treating FIFA. It has got all of the advanced complexities of being able to do whatever the hell you want. I mean, the it's got so many leagues, it's unbelievable. It's got the Italian leagues, it's got Korea Republic League, Mexico, Netherlands, Norway, Poland. It's got a hell of a lot of teams over a hell of a lot of leagues. Uh, not every league has like League A and League B or League 1, League 2 and that. Um, the biggest one is England, which is kind of expected because at the end of the day... It's designed for an English audience and a European audience as well because it's bigger over here than it is in the States. So in England, even though you've got some absolutely horrific, awful teams down in League 2, you can go through Barclays Premier League, the FL Championship, the Football League, the Football League 2, the, and it, it, it's just got a, a, an amazing amount of different teams ranging all the way from Akron and Stanley I'd like to think that anyone in their right mind will have just said, who are they in their heads? There's just something about adverts that stick with you. Um, and it's just a fantastic setup of with things that you can do with it. But for now, I'm just going to be, as I say, playing it as like an arcadey football game because it works really well if you're trying to play it simple. It's got everything that you'd pretty much need. It's got the, without having to go too far into depth with things. Um, it's got obviously a good passing mechanic. It's very rare that the passes do actually, you know, fail to go to who they want to. It can happen a bit more than you would like, unfortunately, but it's far better than any of the other FIFA games that I've played. Um, same with the crossing system. I used to never do crosses because I was just terrible at it, and now the majority of my goals are scored from crosses and corners because the system has just been improved so much. Um, the offside system works well, but the amount of times the AI runs himself into an offside position, that one my fault, I'm not going to say anything other. But there are sometimes, I mean from a goal kick, we've been offside. Uh, it's the sort of thing, it's just like, what the hell was the AI thinking? Why would it even, it just makes no sense. Uh, it's just one of those things that it, more than one occasion in more than one game have we been on a a run where we've tried to pass to a guy who wasn't offside and it's then decided to pass to someone who was offside so when things work they work great but when things don't work it seems they don't work in a spectacular enough fashion to annoy the hell out of you so I think the crossing system, as I say, is fantastic. The corner system is fantastic. Goal kicks, they work so much better than they've done in previous years because they're actually a lot more accurate. It's just you've got to be careful with the power for the times of when you can get offside with them. I just think the whole mechanics and everything work amazingly well. The auto-change player is probably the best I've ever seen in a football game because the amount of times it changes to the right player instead of the wrong one is just fantastic. 
and then it actually then creates its own problem of you think well oh I best change and it changed at the same time so then you do a double change and you change to the totally wrong person and screw yourself over it's the type of thing that you have to have more faith in the computer system Again though, that isn't perfect and sometimes you'll have a player who's right next to the player with the ball and in a great position to be able to stick the leg out because that's one of the uh, defensive manoeuvres, like it's one of the pressures. It's essentially, if you ever played a hockey game, it's the, the football equivalent of a stick check. You just go in front of him, you stick the leg out, you can get the ball and kick it to another player easily enough. And it, it's a thing that I do all of the time, it's pretty much the only defence I can play on the game uh, and do well. So you'll have a player in the perfect position to be able to do that and it'll swap you to someone miles away from the player. So again, when it works, it works spectacularly, but when it doesn't work, it works just bad enough to make it an issue and to hope that they're, they're going to be able to patch it and fix it up. Uh, it, it's just something though that, that it is phenomenal, the change between the console versions because my little brother goes around his mates all the time and plays FIFA 14 on an Xbox 360. And the one thing he said when he got it, Jesus, it's just, it's so archaic almost, playing it on the 360 version. The engine has been refined so much because of the power of the next-gen systems. It's the first time they've been able to do it, that it just plays marvellously well. So, it does pretty much tick all of the boxes for anyone who just wants to play it as a casual football game. But at the same time, I'm sure it does tick all the boxes for someone who wants to play it as something in-depth that they're going to get a full year's worth of play out and be able to do leagues and seasons and go online all the time and do all the, the perfect little moves that you see the stars like Messi do and things like that. You, you know, it's just... It, it is... The, the, it's probably the, the perfect way to put it. It's the only one of the only games out there that does casual and hardcore perfectly. You can either play it as a casual game with your friends to just have some fun with it, or you can take it to the extreme and you can play it as if your life depended on it. And it, overall, as I say, it has been the biggest shock. It's the game I expected to absolutely detest, and it's the game I've spent most time on. And yeah, as I say, that's probably because Injustice didn't come, so we, we couldn't swap between fighting each other to versing each other on football. But even so, we over a couple of days we've racked up 100 matches because we've just had everyone around playing it, and it's just been a fantastic game for that reason. Uh, it's the sort of thing that hopefully we don't end up burning ourselves out on it before Injustice finally turns up, because at least then that way we can all fight each other and even the non-fight fans can find fun with it, because with uh, the PS3 version it was a case of, well I don't play fighters, but I really want to see what Batman plays like, and it was quite fun like that. So uh, yeah, overall I cannot be anything but glowing with this game. It is just absolutely brilliant and it's managed to make an altogether mundane launch in the terms of multiplayer games into something that is just so special. And yes, by the way, when I say multiplayer games, I of course mean local, couch co-op, couch local, couch versus multiplayer games. Because obviously for multiplayer online, you've got things like Call of Duty, which everyone will play at every minute of every hour of the day, pretty much. Even if they don't like it, because it's like the only one that people want to play. And you've also got the fantastic Killzone, which builds on everything that I think Killzone rated it. But I'll save those for those reviews. So there we go then, that's been the review, I hope you found it helpful. I don't score the games because that's based purely on opinion, so instead I'll leave you to make your own mind up. So thanks for watching and if you've got any questions about the game that I didn't answer in the vid or that hasn't been answered in the comments then feel free to ask and I'll help if I can. Also if you did find it helpful don't forget to check out my channel because there's plenty more like this up there and don't forget to subscribe because there'll be plenty more to come as well. So until next time this has been Demon212. Signing off.